Today's lecture is actually uh, going to be on finite state machines. Anybody know what finite state machines are? So any digital system is a finite state machine, uh, be it a calculator or some vending machine or an ATM machine or even your computers. Those, those are referred to as finite state machines. The reason we call them finite state machine is because they have limited capabilities. There's only certain number of tasks you could do with a certain computer of a certain configuration. There's certain number of things that you could do with a basic calculator. Uh, so today's example is going to be of, uh, based on vending machine, which is going to dispense a drink when 75 cents are deposited. And you'll see how we make a transition from one state to another. So if you insert a coin 25 cents, the state changes from you know, 0 cents to 25 cents. You insert another quarter, you move from one state to another, 25 cents to 50 cents. And once it gets to 75 cents, it basically is supposed to uh, dispense a product, uh, which in this case is going to be a drink. So an event has occurred. So transi transition between state and the another state, and then based upon that state, what happens? This is what we refer as a finite state machines. So I got a little bit of theory right here. I'm not going to go over through it. It's basically what I just said. Uh, we also started sequential circuits last week. Now, uh, before that, we have done combinational logic circuits. The difference between combinational logic circuits and sequential circuits is that of the uh, clock. Uh, you, you must have uh, learned about the clock. And in the, in the case of the sequential circuit, the, uh, the output is not just dependent upon the present set of inputs, but also depends upon the past history of the outputs. So say, for example, if you happen to be a book reader using a lamp right next to your bed, you press the button, the light goes on. You press the same button again, light turns off, right? So based upon the previous history of the outputs, whether the light was or lamp was on or off, you press the button, it, you know, responds to it. Think of a garage door. If it's closed, you press the button, it, you know, the garage door opens. You press the same button because the garage door was open, left open, you press the button again, it goes. So this is sequential circuits. It's basically employing a feedback. So you have a present input, which is feeding back into the system, okay? Uh, another example could be of a fan. So I have a fan in my office. You press the button, it turns on at a low speed. You press that same button again, it goes to medium speed. Press the same button again, it goes to high speed. And the fourth time I press that button, it turns off, okay? This is sequential circuit. A bit is being stored, and we use flip-flops for that, okay? And you, the, the difference between the latches and the flip-flop was that flip-flops basically uh, uses uh, clock, whereas latch uses enable. That kind of like an on and off thing we did with the encoders and decoders. Okay. Uh, now, flip-flops only store one bit, but if you put flip-flop like four right next to each other, we should be able to store four bits. If you have eight flip-flop right next to each other, you should be able to store eight bit. Okay. So when those eight bit combine, those eight flip-flop, they store eight bit and they make what? Register, that will be uh, what we know. So there's gonna be an entire lecture on register, but uh, I just wanted to give a brief summary of what you should have known uh, by last week. Uh, you should have covered four kind of flip-flop, D flip-flop, SR flip-flop, JK flip-flop, and T flip-flop, correct? Okay, we're gonna implement all four of them in our future lectures. Today we are going to implement D flip-flop. So let's get started with our example. Example number one, uh, it's an this is the only example that we have. Uh, it's, a, it's a big one. Uh, so hopefully we can finish it in the given time. So uh, uh, please give your fullest concentration. It's, this is a very important lecture. So it dispenses a drink after 75 cents is deposited. Once it receives 75 cents, it resets, meaning in order for the drink to be dispensed again, it has to have 75 cents inserted again. Uh, it returns the change. Uh, it accepts only quarters and dollar, okay? Uh, and a single slot for the coin, so it only accepts one coin at a time, all right? So if you look at it, here's a flow chart right here. Uh, so here is your FSM. This is your vending machine right here. Uh, you got input here, which is the coin sensor, okay? In our case, it's going to be a coin and a dollar bill. Uh, we have the output here, which is the drink release. And then we, for most of the sequence circuits, we know that we're going to have a clock, uh, and then we're going to have a reset also. Okay, uh, now, whenever you are designing a project, say you have a project that you have proposed, uh, how, you would, how would you get started on it? 
the very first thing that you want to do is uh, you have to identify your inputs, your outputs, and your transition sequence. Okay, what are going to be, if I look at this block diagram right here of a vending machine, what are going to be my inputs? We got two kinds of inputs. One is the bill, correct? And the other one is coder. Okay, remember this Q and cap is coder. Okay, um, we usually have clock here. And then we usually have reset here. Okay, uh, what are the outputs here? The output is definitely the one of the output is drink, correct? Okay, I'm going to use variable k for drink. Okay, and we what's the another output right here? Yeah, the change, correct? Thank you. So change, and I'm going to use c for change. Uh, now we have identified our inputs and outputs. Uh, let's now move on to the uh, transition sequence. So what could be the transition sequence? Think of a user standing right in front of vending machine. What what are the chances or what are the options that he may have? Well, the very first option could be he just entered three quarters, right? So um, 25 cents, 25 cents, okay, okay. You have to anticipate all kind of, you know, options user could go with. Uh, so the change here would be how much? Zero cents, correct? Okay. All right. Uh, second option could be he may start with two quarters. Okay. And then he realizes, oh, he don't have enough quarters. So he, uh, you know, uh, inserts a bill, a dollar bill. Okay. So how much would be a change here now? Come on, guys. 75 cents, right? 75 cents. Okay. Uh, another option could be, again, he starts over the quarter, realizes he only has one, and then he goes for a dollar bill. So he inserts $1.25. 75 cents is for the drink. The change is going to be 50 cents, correct? Is everybody following me? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now, what could be the last option here? He just inserts a dollar bill, dollar bill, right? So in that case, the change is going to be 25 cents. Okay, now if you look at the change right here, right here, these are the possible change that a machine will have to, you know, uh, give up. So, uh, for this, we would need how many bits? Four bits? Anybody else? We can go with two bits too, right? Two to the power two is four, right? So say C1 uh, and C0. So zero, zero could be uh, zero cents, zero, one it would be 25 cents, uh, one, zero would be 50 cents, uh, and then one one would be how much? 75 cents, right? Uh, we have covered all the possible scenarios. Uh, is there anything that's left here? Good. Okay, all right. So the first step is done. We have identified our inputs and outputs. We have a transition sequence. Uh, we're going to move on to state diagram. Did you guys do state diagram last week? You did? Okay. Anybody remember what is a state diagram? State diagram basically defines the behavior of your finite state machine. Using the state diagram, you can drive a state table or a characteristic table, and using that table, you can come up with an expression for your outputs, and then you can do an implementation coming up with a block diagram. Okay, so how many states are we gonna have here? How many states are you gonna have here? You always think of the smallest possible increment when it comes to like a winning machine, which could be you know, uh, 25 cents in our case because uh, that's the uh, that's the behavior of the machine. It only accepts quarters and dollars. If it would have been nickel, then the smallest possible increment would have been five cents, right? Uh, so here we're gonna start off. Uh, we need three states. Ideally, you want to keep these states, <clears throat> excuse me, as small as possible. 
I can actually technically add one more, but I'm just going to keep it three so that our truth table is smaller. So my first state is going to be zero, zero, which is zero cents. Okay. All right. What could be the next state? Zero, one, and this would be 25 cents. And the third state, S2, which makes a binary code of 1, 0. Uh, and this would be 70, uh, sorry, 50 cents. Okay? All right. So remember here, you got your S0, S1, and S2. This is 0 cents. This is 25 cents. And this is 50 cents. Okay? Also, if you look at your inputs, you got inputs are bill and uh, encoder. Okay, so zero zero is zero cents. Uh, zero one is uh, twenty five cents. One zero is fifty cents, and then we have one one which is going to be 75 cents change, okay? This was the change. Okay, so for state diagram, uh, in the previous step, we had identified our inputs and outputs, and the relationship between the input and output is written as such that uh, inputs over outputs, Okay, obviously we're gonna use our variable names for inputs. So what are the inputs our? Yes guys, uh, bill and quarter, correct? And what are the outputs? Come on, we need participation. Drink, okay, I use variable K for drink and change, and I'll use C1 and C0 for it, right? Remember, we had to change C1 and C0, and I use a variable K for drink, okay? All right, now, we're gonna start off from here. The present state is zero, zero. The customer is actually standing right in front of vending machine. Nothing has been entered, okay? He's got three options, okay? The first option is nothing is being entered. No bill, no quarters goes in. What should be the output? K, zero, right? Okay, what should be the change? Zero, and zero is zero, zero, so zero, zero, okay? Now, uh, a quarter is inserted, so say uh, bill is zero, quarter goes in. What should be the next state? The present state is zero, zero. What should be the next state? Quarter goes in, counter goes up by 25 cents, so it has to move from S0 to S1, correct, good, okay, and you always have these arrows right here, so that tells you the transition, okay, what should be the output here, guys, is it going to dispense the drink, not yet, correct, zero, is it going to dispense any change, not yet, so zero, Zero. Okay. All right. The third possibility, bill goes in, quarter is zero. S and you, the present state is zero, zero. What should happen? If the present state is zero, zero, that means you have zero cents in the machine. A uh, customer inserts a dollar bill. That means it's going to dispense the product, reset itself, and then returns to zero again. Correct? So it'll actually go back again to zero. So the input bill was one, quarter was zero, okay? What are the outputs? This uh, drink is going to be dispensed. What is going to be C1, C0? How much is the change? 25 cents? 25 cents is zero, one, right? So we get zero, one here, correct? Is everybody following me here? Okay, all right. Uh, now we're gonna move on to S1, okay? Again, uh, zero, zero, bill is zero, quarter is zero. 
Why are we not going with one one bill one quarter one? You're only going to accept one, you know, method of payment. Okay. Uh, so zero zero. What which, what should be the output here, guys? Zero, and then change is going to be zero zero also. Okay. Now uh, bill is zero, quarter is one. What's going to happen? It's going to move to fifty cents, right? It had 25 cents initially. Uh, bill is zero, quarter is one. So 25 cents plus 25 cents, 50 cents. So it goes to S2. What, is it going to dispense the product? Well, not, not right now, right? Uh, and no change also, okay? Uh, what about the present state is S1, which is 25 cents. Now bill goes in. Bill is one, quarter is zero. What is going to be the next state? Come on, S2. So 25 cents inserted. Uh, now he's a, a putting in dollar bill. So the total amount is one dollar and 25 cents. It is supposed to dispense a product, reset itself, and goes back to S0, zero zero. Okay. I can technically write this also as reset. Also, this is sort of like a reset. Okay. <clears throat> so this is going to be. Okay, um, bill was one, quarter zero. Uh, this is going to dispense the product one. How much is going to be the change, guys? 50 cents, and 50 cents is one zero. So we got one zero here. Okay, all right. Now we're gonna move on to S2. Uh, 50 cents, zero zero. This will be zero zero. Now 50 cents, uh, bill is zero, quarter is one. So the next state is going to be, you got 50 cents in there. Customer is now entering a quarter. The next state is going to be? S naught, right? It's gonna go to S naught. Bill is zero, quarter is one. Uh, it's going to dispense a product because it's got 75 cents in there. And how much is the change, guys? Zero, zero, correct? Because you got exactly 75 cents. Uh, What's the third option uh, here? Bill is zero. Oh, sorry, bill is one and quarter is zero, which would mean the next state would be what? The next state would be still be S naught. It's just the change is going to change, right? So bill is zero, quarter is one. It's going to dispense the product drink. Uh, what's going to be the change? Fifty cents plus dollar is one dollar and fifty cents. Seventy-five cents for the drink, the change is to be 75 cents. And you know 75 cents is one, one, right? So this will be one, one. This is your state diagram. Okay, this is your completed state diagram. This tells you the behavior of your finite state machine, okay? Um, I can, if I like, I can add another state here just to avoid confusion. I can say 75 cents, another state, and I can declare this as three and 75 cents, and then it would still work, but you're gonna have a bigger truth table. Remember, our goal is to reduce the number of states, okay? So that's why I only went with uh, zero, 25, and 50 cents. You can add another 75 cents and it would still work, okay? Uh, now, the third step is to, we have to choose what kind of uh, flip-flop we are going to use. In this case, we are actually going to use the flip-flop. Uh, and do you guys remember what is the equation for the D flip flop? When the clock is, say it's positive edge triggered, it goes from low to high. Uh, what is the next state? You guys remember this? And I'll show you where we would implement this. <clears throat> Okay, all right. Now we're gonna work on our uh, state table, okay? If you wish, you can look at your state diagram and fill your uh, truth table, or you can just, you know, follow along the same way that you did uh, when you were doing the state diagram. So uh, current state zero, zero, which is this right here, right? So this is your S naught, in other words, zero cents, zero, one, this is your S1 state, uh, 25 cents. And this is your S2, 50 cents, 
Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So if the present state is zero zero, which means zero cents, uh, bill is zero, quarter is zero. What is going to be the next state? Bill is zero, quarter is zero. The next state was S naught, right? Correct. And S naught is zero zero, so zero zero. Correct. Uh, what about the drink? Well, drink was zero, and change was also zero. Correct. So drink is zero, and change is also zero. Okay. Uh, let's do this one. Again, the present state is zero cents. Uh, bill is zero, quarter is one. So when zero, bill was zero, quarter was one, it went from S naught to S1, and S1 is zero one, right? Uh, drink is zero, change is zero. So let's finish this real quick. Uh, again, zero cents, bill is one. Uh, what is going to be the next state here, guys? Zero, zero, okay. Uh, drink is going to be dispensed. Uh, and then how much would be the change here? 25 cents, which is zero one. Okay. Let's do it for, <clears throat> what's gonna happen here? Zero, zero present state, bill is one, quarter is one. Uh, we, uh, we decided early on when we were making this finite state machine that no two different, uh, you know, uh, coins or bill can go together. Okay, it has to be either coin at one time or a dollar bill at one time. In this case, it says both are going at the same time, correct? Which, the, which could uh, result in a timing issue for our counters, right? So we're just gonna say don't care. We don't care about it. We're not gonna include that to analysis. So this will be don't care, okay? Now, zero one, that means present state is 25 cents, zero, bill zero quarter, what should be the next state? It should stay there, right? So this will be zero one. Uh, drink is zero. C1, C0 is also zero. <clears throat> uh, again, 25 cents. Uh, quarter goes in, so it should go to 50 cents, which is S2. S2 is one zero, okay? Uh, it's not going to dispense the drink yet. This is going to be zero zero. Um, now here, what's gonna happen, guys? Current state is zero one, which is 25 cents. Bill is one and quarter is zero. So 25 plus dollar is one dollar and 25 cents, which means the next state is going to be zero zero. Drink is going to be one and the change is going to be 50 cents, correct? One zero, thank you. Okay, I sort of like went ahead and partially filled it for you guys. Uh, what would happen over here? If I say this is S3, which we are not using it, right? So what would happen to this entire thing? We are not using it, so don't care, okay? So just don't care, don't care. Don't care, don't care. Don't care. I only have one left here, this one. Uh, one zero, which means 50 cents present state. Bill is one, quarter is zero. What would be the next state? Zero, zero, right? It's going to dispense the drink. How much would be the change? 75 cents, so 75 cents is one, one, so it's going to be one and one, okay? Uh, our truth table is complete, okay? Uh, we basically drove this truth table looking at this state diagram, okay? Uh, once we have finished this, that's half battle done, uh, half battle one. So the next step is to coming up with the logic expression, okay? I went ahead uh, because I wanted to finish this lecture in the given time, so I went ahead and did the logic sim on it, uh, and these are, um, five equations, one for the Q1, again this is the next, one for the Q0, uh, this is the next state, this is for the drink right here, uh, and then this is for the change, right, so drink here, <clears throat> uh, 
this is for the change. Okay, uh, and then these two right here are the next states. Okay. <clears throat> One thing you should always remember, guys, um, I'm pretty sure Professor Bidar uh, might have mentioned that. Uh, when you are doing a state table, you should always have your inputs and present states right next to each other. So if you see your present state, current state, and your inputs are right next to each other, okay? If you like, you can actually move your bill and quarters to over here also. That is not going to make any difference. Okay, and you can move your current state over here. As long as they are right next to each other, that's fine. Okay, so your current state and input are always going to be right next to it, next to each other in a state table. And then you have the next state and then followed by the outputs. Okay, in this case we have two outputs. One is for the drink and the other one is for the change. Then we drove these expressions. Now using these expressions, we are going to uh, we're going, to, we're going to implement those expressions and come up with a sequential circuit. So the fifth step is actually the sequential circuit. Okay. Uh, and then we, uh, since we mentioned we are going to use a D flip flop to implement this circuit. So I got two D flip flops. Why I got two of those? Why not one? Because if you look at your next state, you got two variables in your next state. Q1 not, and then Q, I mean it's not a not, Q1 star uh, asterisk, and then Q not asterisk. You got two of those, right? So I'm gonna need two of the D flip flop. Say if this was Q2 star, Q1 star and Q0 star, then you would need three flip flops. Okay? Say it was Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0, then you would need four of them. We'll do different examples. In this example, we got two, so we would need two D flip flops. Okay, we're going to work on the K expression first. Uh, and the K expression was Q1, Q. What is this Q right here, guys? Not to get confused, this Q is quarter. Okay? All right? Uh, what is this B right here? B is the bill, correct? So two in, and what is your Q1? Your Q1 is right here. Okay, all right. So uh, looking at the expression, we got Q1 dot Q. So I will just simply connect Q1 with this end gate right here. Uh, and this is my Q1, and this is going to be my Q quarter. Let me write it down here. Q is and B is the dollar bill. Okay, uh, and then plus plus B. Okay, so this goes here. And then you got B. So this is your K is your drink right here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's work on the change now. C1 and C0. So C1 is right here. C1 is Q0B plus Q1B. Okay. So I can, Q0 is right here. So this is my Q0. And this is going to be my bill B, okay. This goes into this state, this expression is going to be Q1B. You know Q1 is right here. Okay, so this is my Q1. 
and this is going to be my B right here and they go into this OR gate these are the end gate and they make C1 okay I'm gonna work on C0 now C0 is Q not bar and B <clears throat> Q0 is right here so I'll just pull it from here And it has to go through a inverter because it's Q naught, okay? Q naught bar, and then this is going to be B, okay? And this makes your C naught, okay? All right, uh, we're gonna work on Q one. This right here, this term right here, which is Q naught Q. So I can just take this right here. This is Q naught and this is Q quarter. And this we have Q1, B bar, Q bar. This right here goes here. This is your Q1. Okay. Uh, and then we have B bar, which is bill. I'm just, just going to use a bevel here, so it just makes a B bar, and then Q for quarter, and again I'm going to use a bevel here, okay? So this becomes your B bar, and this becomes your Q bar, okay? Uh, and the output of these two end gates are seeded into, okay? And this makes Q1, okay? Where the, the output of this this Q1 asterisk is feeded into which flip-flop? This is the next term, right? Correct? And what is the relationship when, uh, when the clock is high in a deep flip-flop? What is Qn plus 1? It's equals to? D, right? Correct? So this is supposed to go into becoming one of the inputs of one of the flip-flops which one look at the number here it's q1 asterisk right so it's supposed to go to d1 right so d1 is right here so i'm gonna throw the because it's a big finite state machine so it, it may just look messy but that's how it's going to be So this is my Q1 asterisk, okay. All right, anything else, guys? Anything else that I'm missing here? Obviously, this is our clock right here. Is this a positive H-triggered or negative H-triggered clock? Yes. Yeah, so if you uh, look at this triangle sort of thing, Whenever you have something like that, this is positive edge triggered, guys. Okay. okay. Uh, say you have a bubble sort of thing over here. Uh, so this would mean it's a negative edge triggered. What's the difference between positive and negative edge triggered? Is in a positive edge triggered, the change happens when the clock goes from low to high. Okay. Low to high. And in a negative edge trigger, change happens when the clock goes from high to low. Okay. Uh, now, if you notice, actually, we are missing one more uh, term, which is what? Which is this right here. Right? So, I'm not going to make it, but what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to make a block here. Uh, I'm just use a red, different color here. So I'll just use a block here and I'll say this is the combinational uh, logic uh, diagram 
for q not asterisk okay okay so this circuit right here just think of it that circuit is in this box right here okay the output is right here where this output is gonna go come on guys say it again d naught how many of you agree that it's gonna go to d naught yes it is going to go to the d naught and d naught is right here All right, you usually have your Q naught bar here. You usually have, usually have your Q1 bar here. Okay, uh, so this is basically your sequential circuit for the vending machine that you uh, just created. So if you actually go to Logistim and make this circuit and try to implement logic, it should be able. It should work. It should be uh, dis you know dispensing you the product when the uh, deposit goes 75 cents and above, and it should return you a change as well. Okay. Uh, 11 more minutes. Uh, let's move on to our last part, which is the very log coding. Uh, okay, all right, folks. Let's get started. If you if you want to, you can actually put your block diagram ahead of you, in front of you, so you know what your inputs and outputs are going to be. We're going to start up with the module name. So, say you got module space vending machine. Make sure no spaces, no dashes. Um, and then declare port identification, de declaring all your inputs. What are the inputs here, guys? So, the first, when I, whenever you're making a sequential circuit, just Close your eyes, write down input clock and reset. Okay, those are going to be your first ones. Okay, uh, what are the other inputs that you got? We got two inputs, dollar bill and a quarter. So I can make an error for that. And I'm just using a variable in for that. So remember, this is your dollar bill in a quarter okay are the inputs done here guys yes you got bill and quarter you got reset we got clock anything else no all right let's move on to the outputs what are the outputs here obviously we have drink here and I'm using a variable K here so uh, I'll just use K and we have another output which is change and change is going to be what here? Error, right? Because we need two bits. So one, zero, and I'm just going to use C variable, okay? Uh, bracket close, semicolon, okay? So this is my change uh, and this was my drink. Up as an output okay uh, we have to declare our state register uh, how many states do we got uh, how many states do we got we got s naught um, we have we got three states s naught s1 and s2 so definitely it has to be what an array again, right? So this will go from one to zero, okay? And I'll use a variable named state for it. So again, these are my state registers. Okay, um, from state diagram. And those are S naught, 
S1 and S2. Okay, remember, <coughs> excuse me, uh, S0 is uh, 0 cents, S1 is 25 cents, and then S2 was 50 cents. Okay, now we have to declare our states. So we say parameter. This is the uh, command right here. Just assigning all the states some numeric value. <clears throat> so here just declaring states here uh, which basically define a, a set of attributes that characterizes the behavior of the SM, FSM. Okay, all right. Now, always at, now we are into sequential circuits. You're gonna have to, uh, everything has to be clock triggered, right? And because it is a, what kind of uh, clock do you have there? This guys, what kind of a clock do you have? You have a positive edge triggered clock, right? So we're gonna say at positive edge, P-O-S-E-D-G-E, -E. okay? If, it, if we had a bubble there, uh, we would have said negative. So we just replace P-O-S with N-E-G, okay, negative. Okay, all right, begin uh, if reset. What should happen if reset this, the machine reset itself, what should happen? Yes, it should go to zero, right? Okay, so we would say here, um, the state should get to zero. Reset um, machine, if reset state should reset itself, state should reset uh, goes to S0, okay, which is zero, zero, or in other words, zero cents, okay, all right. <clears throat> This is that okay. All right, this part is done. Else, we're gonna do uh, case keyword. Now, if we like, we can actually do that assign function. But again, because you know our expression is so big, we'll just use case terminology, case keyword. And we are doing uh, why we have state here in the parentheses because we are looking at the state, right? Uh, depending upon the state and the input, uh, that's how the transition is going to place take place. So let's move on to the next page that we have. So again, uh, this is the same thing. I'll just rewrite it again. Okay, case state. S not. Okay, now if the input is zero, zero, what should happen? What does this mean? If the input, what is what is the input here? Bill and quarter, right? And we have zero. It, it could be zero zero. It could be zero one, or it could be one zero. Correct? Right? One one. We're not doing it. We just consider it as a don't here. Okay. Here, if input equals to two bits, which are both set to zero zero, which means bill is zero and quarter is zero. So what should be the next state? It should stay where it is, right? 
so s not okay and what about the outputs both outputs should be zero so k equals to one zero and then k uh, core, uh, change c equals to zero zero okay why i have two bar b zero zero for c because we have two bits for c okay all right now if n is two bar b zero one what does this mean bill is zero but quarter is one so state gets what here state gets to what state next state right uh, which is 25 cents and 25 cents is what 25 cents is s1 correct okay semicolon what should happen to the outputs both should be zero because it's 49 I'll just need three minutes more and we can finish this can we do that okay awesome thank you okay if I am what is the last combination one zero right okay this would mean what that bill is zero, bill is one and then quarter is zero what should be the next state now uh, not necessarily we'll just end this after that yeah <clears throat> if you wish you can also skip that okay yeah uh, okay so uh, what should be the next state here guys Remember your present state is S naught, okay, which is zero cents, okay. Uh, user enters bill, so dollar goes in. So the next state is going to be S zero. Uh, what about the output K high, correct? What about the change? Dollar goes in. Change is supposed to be twenty five. And 25 cents changes what? Zero, 1, correct? So it has to be 0, 1. Are all the uh, possible combinations are done for S0 here? Done, right? So because we had a begin here, <coughs> excuse me, I'll just say end here. Okay. Now moving on to the next page. Uh, I already have it partially filled. Now we are doing it for S1. Uh, and we know S1 is what? 25 cents. Okay. So if the N is 0, 0, this means bill and quarter both are 0. So the state gets what? Come on, guys. The current state is S1. Nothing is entered. So the state is supposed to stay there, and so it is going to be S1, correct? What is going to be the output here? 0, and C is going to be 0 as well. Okay, uh, next combination, we have uh, B uh, equals to 0, and then Q quarter is 1. So initially we had 25 cents. We have quarter going in, so the next state is going to be 50 cents, and we know 50 cents is S2. Okay, so we go to S2. K is going to be what? Zero. Good job. And change is going to be zero as well. Okay, uh, here now we have bill one, and then quarter is zero. Uh, remember we have 25 cents in there so bill goes in the total is going how much 125 correct uh, state is going to reset itself it will go to uh, s naught the output is going to be high and then change is going to be how much <clears throat> 50 cents right so one zero one zero right uh, and then I'll just end this okay Let's move to our last page. We can finish this real quick. Almost done.
<clears throat> S2 is how much guys? That's 50 cents, right? So the currently you got 50 cents in the machine. Uh, zero, zero, this will be, uh, it'll just stay here. The output is going to be zero. Change is going to be zero also, okay? Then we have quarter one, so it's gonna reset itself again. The, it's gonna dispense the product. Uh, what's gonna be the change here, guys? Zero. Awesome. And the last we have bill one and quarter zero. So the next state is going to be as not again. Uh, it's going to dispense the drink here. Uh, and how much is going to be the change here? You got 50 cents in there. Bill goes in 150. So change is going to be one one. Uh, one one. Uh, we had a begin here, so we'll end. Okay, we will end case here, and then we will end module. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys for your time. I shall see you guys Thursday.